the ingredients used in beer come from pretty specific places. Now, there's not a lot of barley farms in the United States. Most of those are up in Canada and Alberta and Saskatchewan, and we're dealing with farmers in Alberta where we deal directly with them to get most of our malted barley. We try to buy as many of our ingredients directly from our farmers now. We've just developed these programs over the last couple of years. So all of our hop growers, you know, they, there's four families that grow hops that have been doing it for four generations. They were selling all their barley to the Canadian Wheat Board, and the Wheat Board would develop commodity pricing, and uh, we've kind of taken that element out of it, where we deal directly with them now, so there's no commoditization of the pricing. It's a very sustainable pricing model for them. They know what they're going to get out of it every year. We help them pay for insurance for hailstorms or anything like that that might take uh, take out the crop. And uh, we protect us and the farmers by doing that, where we can go elsewhere now and buy the barley through just the standard sort of way that everybody else does. Yeah, we inventory management has been a really important part of us making sure that we're making the right amount of beer to send to the right people at the right time. And our pipeline has always been really dry. We just can't keep up with demand, just like most craft brewers. We're, you know, we're constantly trying to, trying to figure out who needs the beer the worst. So we've put in a, actually a very sophisticated forecasting system called Demand Solutions. That's, uh, um, it's a forecasting model that looks at, it's an algorithmic system that really takes into account holidays and weather patterns and last year's sales. And we're able to really predict what our distributors are going to need better than they do. And as we grow so fast, I mean, we're up, you know, triple digits with half of our distributors. We're up 80% this year as a whole, which, I mean, the next closest brewer is probably up 40 or 50%. You know, it's just ridiculous what's going on. So we did put in a very sophisticated system to try to project our needs and make sure that the right distributors had the right mix. And we give them a forecast rather than them placing an order with us. We tell them what we think they're going to need, and then they can adjust if they want to. And when they adjust and we can show them that we were right and they were wrong, they just start going along with our model. And we did that within a really rudimentary way where we would watch our inventory. You know, our inventory here at the brewery is one thing, but our distributor inventories is really what we need to watch. And 130 something now. We've added a couple of, we've changed in Florida to a new network and things like that. But, uh, you know, to watch our distributors inventories is really our key. So, I built a really, really simple little Excel spreadsheet that would take the distributor's inventory, plug in what they sold the month before, put that in as a projection for this month, even though seasonality would affect that, it wouldn't affect it by more than 15 or 20% tops from month to month, right? So we'd look at the previous month to this month, plug in that number, look at what their inventory was, and look what the, their orders were on the books, and then see what we thought their projected inventory would be at the end of the following month. And we just send them back that spreadsheet and say, we don't think you're ordering enough of this beer. We think you're ordering too much of this one. And it was just, it was a really simple formula. I mean, I'm, I'm no algorithmic code writer. So, uh, so we, just, we just did it the old school way and now it's a lot more sophisticated.